Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be taking a step back from the region analysis and the Pokemon analysis and talk specifically about the brand new evil team of Scarlet and Violet, Team Star. But before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. The Tokyo Treat and Sakurako boxes contain different Japanese snacks and have a new theme every month. You'll find many modern pop snacks and candies in the Tokyo Treat box, and more traditional Japanese snacks in the Sakurako box. They also make it easy to know what you're snacking on with these booklets in each box. With Halloween coming up, the Tokyo Treat box is tricked out with pumpkins, ghosts, and candy corn. Some of the favorite snacks in these boxes include potato Kit Kats, Tejado Caramel Corn, and their famous Tokyo Layer Loaf with a maple pumpkin flavor. The Sakurako box includes treats from the Ibaraki region of Japan, with help from their local government. The box has tons of crunchy and fruity snacks, such as Chestnut Carinto, Benazuma Sweet Potato Cake, and Blueberry Manju. There's also a Panrito Natto snack, if you're curious about Natto. The snacks go great with Senka Tea. Check it out, and thanks again to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. So I've largely been a fan of everything we've seen in all of the trailers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Not only does the game look really good, not only does the open world look really exciting to explore, but the story and the school setting is always a good one in video games. It always has a ton of potential for character development, fun interaction between the, between the protagonist and other members of the story, and it also gives you a good incentive for exploration and for achievements. So everything I've seen, I really like, and every trailer we've gotten has led, largely led to more and more excitement building for this release. Unfortunately, in one of the most recent trailers for Scarlet and Violet, we got the introduction of the quote-unquote evil team of this generation, of the Paldea region, and that evil team goes by the name Team Star. Team Star is going to be stationed throughout the open world of Paldea, and you're going to have to take them on at various stops because they've essentially commandeered streets and commandeered passageways between different parts of the region. We see a boss battle engaged with one of the members of Team Star and your main player character, and they also are atop this enormous sentient looking car. It looks as if there is probably a Pokemon of some kind operating the car in the center. It, it's wild. It's kind of crazy. I, it's one of the three pathways that you can take on your adventure. This racing team star fighting kind of path that you're going to be going along. That's all fun. And I think there's a lot of really cool gameplay mechanics that they could include in this, not only to make team star an interesting evil team and an interesting gameplay experience, but to also switch it up from typical battles. One of the things that I've noticed from some of the screenshots of your interactions with team star is that the battlefield looks a lot larger than a typical Pokemon battle. It feels more feels more zoomed out where your camera is. It feels like your Pokemon has a lot more room around it. So this is going to be a different type of Pokemon battle. They've said so on the website already. These are going to be different from your average wild encounter or your average trainer battle or gym leader. There's just, there's just one issue. And this is a trend that Pokemon has had over the last couple generations. Much like with the rival character in recent years, where in the earlier Pokemon games, the rival character was much more of a jerk character. It was an enemy or a rival or someone you wanted to beat. Slowly but surely, your rival has morphed into a friend character, sometimes taking the form of a child of the Pokemon professor, other times the friend who lives next door, or the person you meet in the town you just moved to. This is what the caricature of the rival character has become in modern Pokemon. They've switched it up a little bit recently. You have characters being the brother of the champion of the region, for example, in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So while they have made adjustments and they have made changes to this archetype, largely the rival character in modern Pokemon is friendly. And if it's done right, and if that character has good development, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. My problem comes more from the Brendan and Maze of the world that are really not that interesting and really only serve as flavor text and serve as an information dump as you go throughout your journey. Pokemon rivals like Barry, who are friends but also rivals, are my favorite kinds. Rivals like Hugh in Black 2 and White 2, a character that is your friend 
It's also your rival, but also has his own personal goals attached to the story you're seeing play out. Those are the best rivals in modern Pokemon. Hop and How are fine. They're not the best. Barry, Hugh, these are some of the better modern rivals. But another trope in modern Pokemon games comes with the evil team. Not only have we recently seen a variety of evil teams in said games, but we've also seen the joke evil team. The not so serious evil team, the evil team that you kind of get happy when you run into, that you kind of root for, they're, they're lovable losers, they're lovable bad guys. Team Skull was one of these evil teams. And before Team Skull, I think is where we hit a wall with evil teams. Team Flare in Pokemon X and Y was the last genuinely, genuinely threatening evil team in a Pokemon game, but they got no development. Team Flare was an incredibly uninteresting evil team. Lysander had his own goals and his own aspirations, and he himself was a diabolical figure, but it wasn't developed enough. Team Flare was the threat of the game. They were trying to use the legendary Pokemon of X or Y to restart the ultimate weapon of thousands of years past and use it again. They were a threat in the story, but there was no development and there was no progression of this evil team in the game. The narrative was weak in X and Y. And ever since then, the main evil team of a Pokemon game has been more of a joke. Team Skull was lovable losers, while the real threat was the Aether Foundation. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, the evil team was Team Yell. Team Yell was a bunch of fanboys and fangirls for Marnie. There, her brother, I believe it was her brother, was a gym leader. That was an interesting foil, and he was the quote-unquote leader of Team Yell. But they were, again, not the threat. The real threat was Chairman Rose and his goons of the Pokemon League in Galar trying to harness the power of Dynamax energy. They were a front for a true threat. This has been two generations now where the real threat has been this behind the scenes. You can kind of see it because Pokemon games aren't that subtle. And you have this front-loaded evil team that's just a joke. And I'm concerned that Team Star is going to be the same thing yet again. It's worth stating that we do not know a ton about Team Star yet. We know what role they play in the grander region, what role their presence takes in the region, and how you're going to interact with them. We've been introduced to grunts and some of the admins. We don't know a ton just yet. And while it does look and appear that they could be more of a joke team, it's highly possible that they do present a growing threat in the region. And I am going to be more than happy to make a video at the end of November or, G or December at some point and say, and analyze this video and say, I was wrong. Team Star returns to a well-developed evil villain, something under the same, you know, banister as a Team Galactic or as a Team Plasma, or even going back to Team Rocket in in some way. I hope that is the case. And Team Star, if they are a joke evil team, could still serve a really good role in the gameplay of the region, could make exploration more interesting, and their battle system that is different from our average battle system could be a really, and probably will be, a really fresh twist on the formula. All of that is really good. All of that is a step forward and a step in the right direction for the Pokemon franchise. Making the evil team more involved in the story of the game and in the exploration of the game is what opening up the world into an open world can really do for you. You can integrate a lot of these elements that used to just be text and blocking certain ways and making you go to a certain building, take on a team at a certain time in the game. You can make it more cohesive to the gameplay itself. So I think that in that way, a lot of what we've seen from Team Star is going to be really beneficial to the Pokemon formula as a whole. I also really like the name Team Star. This is probably absolutely just a coincidence, but if you guys remember back to when the Pokemon rumors for the Nintendo Switch were first bubbling about after, after Sun and Moon, there were rumors flying about that, oh, we could see Pokemon on the Switch. People were speculating wildly about, will this be Generation 8? Will this be a Diamond and Pearl remake right off the rip on the Switch? Will Pokemon even have a presence on the Switch? And if so, how big will it be? One of the rumors was a Pokemon game called Pokemon Stars that was some sort of HD up res of the Alola region. So while this is most definitely a coincidence, I do like that this word, this name, is back in the Pokemon world in some way, because that was a wild time to be a fan during the transition from the 3D era to the Nintendo Switch. 
But what do you guys think about Team Star in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Are you excited about the evil team? Do you like their design? Do you like their role in the region? And what do you think about the more threatening evil team versus the sillier evil teams in Pokemon? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.